Hi guys, I'm back. Today is the 4th of February 2021. Today I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 5 to 9, Proverbs 4, and Psalm 36. Let's get started. Solomon finished all the work of the Lord's temple. Then he broke down the things his father David had set apart for the Lord. They included the silver and gold and all the objects for God's temple. Solomon placed them out there with the other churches. And then Solomon sent for the elders of Israel. He told them to come to Jerusalem. They included all the leaders of the tribes. They usually included the chiefs of the families of Israel. Solomon wanted them to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from Zion. Zion was the city of David. All the Israelites came together to where the king was. And it was at the time of the Feast of Booths. The feast was held in the seventh month. All the elders of Israel arrived. Then the Levites picked up the ark and carried it. They brought up the ark. They also brought up the tent of meeting and all the sacred things in the tent. The priests who were Levites carried up everything. The entire community of Israel had gathered around King Solomon. All of them were in front of the ark. They sacrificed huge numbers of sheep and cattle. There were so many animals they, that they couldn't be recorded. In fact, they couldn't even be counted. The priests brought the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the most holy room of the temple. They put it under the and of the cherubim. The cherubim's wings were spread out over the place where the ark was. They covered the ark. They also covered the poles used to carry it. The poles reached out from the ark. From the ark. They were so long that the ends could be seen from in front of the most holy room, but they couldn't be seen from outside the holy room. They are still there to this day. There wasn't anything in the ark except the two tablets. Moses had placed them in it at Mount Horeb. That's where the Lord had made a covenant with the Israelites. He made it after they came out of Egypt. The priests left the holy room. All the priests who were there had set themselves apart to the Lord. It didn't matter what group they were in. All the Levites who played music stood near the east side of the altar. They included Asaph, Heman, Jedithan, and their sons and their actors. They were dressed up fine then. They were playing symbols, harps, and lights. They were joined by 120 priests who were blowing trumpets. The trumpet players and other musicians played their instruments together. They praised the Lord and gave thanks to him. The singers sang to the music of the trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. They sang and praised to the Lord. The Lord is good. He has faithful love continued forever. Then the fire filled the temple. The priests can go and do their work. That's because the cloud of the glory filled God's temple. And then someone said, but you have said you would live in a dark cloud. I have built a beautiful temple for you. You can live in it forever. The whole community of Israel was standing there. The king turned around and gave them his blessing. Then he said, I praise the Lord. He is the God of Israel. With his mouth he made a promise to my father David. With his powerful hands he made a country. He said, I brought my people ahead of Egypt. I have brought since there a temple for my name has not been built. I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel for that purpose. And I have not chosen anyone to be ruler of my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem. I will put my name there. And I have chosen David to rule over my people Israel. And with all his heart, my father David wanted to build a temple. He wanted to do it so the name of the Lord could be there. The Lord is the God of Israel. But the Lord spoke to my father David. He said to me, He said, with all your heart, you wanted to build a temple for my name. It is good that you wanted to do that, but you will not build the temple. Instead, your son will build the temple for my name. He is your own flesh and blood. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have become the next king after my father did. Now I'm sitting on the throne of Israel. That's really exactly what the Lord promised would happen. I have built the temple for the name of the Lord. He is the God of Israel. I have placed the ark. The tablets of the Lord's covenant are inside you. He made that covenant with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood in front of the Lord's altar. He stood in front of the whole community of Israel. He spread out his hands to pray. He had made a bronze stage. It was seven and a half feet long and seven and a half feet wide. It was four and a half feet high. He had placed it in the center of the outer court. He stood on the stage. Then he got down on his knees in front of the whole community of Israel. He spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, you are the God of Israel. There is no God like you in heaven. Heaven or on earth. You keep the covenant 
and you made with us. You show us your love. You do that when we follow you with all our hearts. You have kept your promise to my father David. He loves you so much. And with your mouth you made a promise. And with your powerful hand you have made a country. And today we can see, Lord, you are the God of Israel. Keep the promises you made to my father David. Do it for him. He was your servant. He said to him, You will always have a son for my family and to sit on Israel's throne. He will sit in front of the most holy one, where my own throne is. I will be true and I will be a future one after you. You are careful in everything they do. They must live the way my Lord tells them to. That is the way you will live. Lord, you are the God of Israel. So let your promise to your servant David come true. But will God really live on earth with human beings? After all, the heavens can't help me. In fact, even the highest heavens can't help me. So this temple I've built certainly can't help you. But please pay attention to my prayer. Lord, my God, be ready to help me as I make my appeal to you. Listen to my cry for cry for help. Hear the prayer I'm praying to you. Let your eyes look toward this temple day and night. You said you would put your name here. Listen to this prayer. To the prayer I'm praying toward this place. The only one I ask you to help us. Listen to your people and when they pray toward this place. Listen to us from heaven. It's the place where you, when you hear us, forgive us. Suppose someone does something wrong to their name, and the person has, who has done something wrong is required to give their word. They must tell the truth about what they have done. They must come and do it in front of your altar in this temple. When they do, listen to them from heaven. Take action. Go between the person and their neighbor. And pay back the guilty one. Do to them what they have done to their neighbor. Deal with the one who is guilty to you in a way that shows they are free from blame. That will prove they are guilty. Suppose your people Israel have lost the battle against their enemies. And suppose they've sinned against them, but they turn their back to you. But they turn back to you and praise them. They pray to you in this temple, and they ask you to help them. Then listen to them from heaven. <coughs> Forgive the sin of your people Israel. Forgive, bring them back to the land you gave to them and their people who live longer. Suppose your people have sinned against you, and because of that, the sky is closed up, and there isn't any. But your people pray toward this place. They praise you by admitting they've sinned, and they call, turn away from their sin because you have made them suffer. Now listen to them from heaven. Forgive the sin of your people, is it? Teach them the right way to them. So rain on you and you gave them as they should. Suppose there isn't enough food in the land, and a plague strikes them. The whole wind is completely dry up our crops, while locusts or grasshoppers come and eat them up. Our oh, enemies surround one of our cities and get ready to attack it. No trouble or sickness comes. But suppose one of your people prays to you. They ask you to help them. They are aware of how much they are suffering, and they spread out their hands toward the temple to pray. Then listen to them from heaven. It's the place where you live. Forgive them. Deal with everyone in keeping with everything they do. And you know their hearts. In fact, you are the only one who knows every human heart. Your people will have respect for respect for you. They'll live the way you want them to. They'll live that way as long as they are in the land and you gave our people on earth. Suppose an outsider who doesn't belong to your people which Israel has come from my father. They have come because they have heard about your great name. They have heard that you reached out your mighty hand and powerful. So they come and pray toward this temple. Then listen to them from heaven. It's the place where you live. Do what that outsider asks you to do. Then all the nations on earth will know. They will have respect for you. They will respect you just as your own people are trying to do. They will know that your name is in this house of God. Suppose your people go to war against their enemies. It doesn't matter where you send them. And suppose they praise you toward the city of your church. They pray toward the temple of God for your name. Then listen to them from heaven. Listen to their prayer. Listen to them when they ask you to help them. Stand up for them. Suppose they sin against you. After all, there isn't anyone who doesn't sin. And suppose you get angry with them. You hand them over to their enemies. You take them as prisoners to earn up one. It doesn't matter where that land is near or far away. But suppose your people change their ways in the land where they are held as prisoners. They turn away from their sins. They beg you to help them in the land where they are prisoners. They say, we have sinned. We have done what is wrong. We have done what is you. And they turn back to you with all their heart and soul. Suppose it happens in the land where they were taken as prisoners. Then there they pray toward the land you gave their people longer. They pray toward the city you have chosen. And they pray toward the temple of God for your name. Then listen to them from heaven. It's the place where you live. Listen to their prayer. Listen to them when they ask you to help them. Stand up for them. Your people have sinned against you. Please forgive them. 
I got the your eyes yes. Let your ear and your attention to the prayers offered in this place. Lord oh God, rise up and come to your resting place. Come in together with you as the sign of your power. Lord oh God, may your priest be on salvation as if you're all dead close. May your faithful people be glad because you are so good. And oh Lord God, don't turn your back on your own to keep. Remember that was a great love he promised you so deep. So I won't finish praying. Then fire came down from heaven. He burned up the burnt offering and the sacrifices. The priests can enter the temple of the Lord because his glory filled it. The all the Israelites saw the fire from heaven. They saw the glory of the Lord above the temple. So they got down on their knees in the courtyard with their faces toward the ground. They worshipped the Lord. They gave thanks to him and said, The Lord is good. His faith will not continue forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon sacrificed 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and all the people set the temple of God. The priests and Levites took their positions. The Levites played the Lord's music to musical instruments. King David had made them for praising the Lord. They were used when he gave thanks to the Lord. He said, His faithful love continued forever. Across from where the Levites were, the priests blew their trumpets. All the people of Israel were standing. Solomon set the middle area of the courtyard and parts of the Lord. It was in front of the Lord's temple. And there Solomon sacrificed better offerings. He used to sacrifice the fat of the French offerings. He did it there because the bronze altar he made couldn't hold it all. He can, it can hold the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat parts. At the time, Solomon celebrated the feast of Greece for seven days. The whole community of Israel was with him. There was a huge crowd. People came from as far away as Libra Hamath and the way of Egypt. On the seventh day, they held a special service. For seven days, they had celebrated by sending the altar apart to honor God. The feast continued for seven more days. Then Solomon said to people, it was the 23rd day of the second, seventh month. The people were glad. Their hearts were full of joy. That's because the Lord had done good things for David and Solomon and his people. So Solomon finished the Lord's temple and the royal palace. And he had done everything he had planned to do in the Lord's temple and the royal palace. The Lord appeared to him and died. The Lord said, I have, made a I have chosen this place for myself. It is a temple where sacrifices will be offered. Suppose I close up the sky and there isn't any rain. Suppose I command locusts to eat up the crop, and I send the plague among my people. But they make themselves humble in my sight. They pray and look to me, and then they turn away, and they turn from their evil ways. Then I will listen to them from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. After all, they are my people. Now my eyes will see them. My ears will pay attention to the prayers they offer in this place. I have chosen this temple. I have set it apart for myself. My name will be there forever. My eyes and heart, my heart will always be there. No, but you must walk faithfully with me, just as your father David did. Do everything I command you to do. Obey my rules and rules. Then I will set up your royal your I made a covenant with your father David to do that. I said to him, you will always have a son from your family and to rule over Israel. But suppose all of you turn away from me. You refuse to obey the rules and commands I have given back, and you go out to serve other gods and worship them. Then I will remove Israel from my and this is the land I gave them. I will turn my back on this temple. I will do it even though I have set it apart for my name to be there. And I will make all the nations hate it. They will laugh and joke about it. This temple will become a pile of stones. All those who pass by it will be shocked. They will say, Why has the Lord done anything like this to this, to this land and temple? People will answer, Because they have deserved the Lord. He is the God of their people who will live longer. He brought them out of Egypt. But they have been holding on to other gods. They have been worshipping them. They've been serving them. That's why the Lord has brought all this horrible trouble on them. Solomon built the Lord's temple in his own palace. It took him 20 years to build them. After that, Solomon rebuilt the villages here and had given it him. Solomon had Israelites make their homes in them. Then Solomon went to Hamas River. He captured it. He also built up Tadmor in the desert. He built up all the cities in Hamas. Where he could store things. He really built up a Bethel and a lower Bethel. He built up high walls around them. He made the city gates secure with heavy mail bars. He rebuilt Balath and all the cities where he could store things. He also rebuilt all the cities for his chariots and horses. Solomon built anything he wanted in Jerusalem, Lebanon, and all the territory he ruled. There were still many people left in the land who weren't Israelites. They included Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hamites, and Jebusites. They were children of the people who lived. Before the Israelites came, the people of Israel hadn't destroyed them. 
Some enforce them to work very hard as their slaves, and they still work there and for each other to this day. But some women didn't force their slaves to work as their slaves. Instead, some were always fighting them. Others were commanders of his captains, chariots, and chariot drivers. And still others were King Solomon's chief officials. There were 250 officials in charge of the other men. Solomon brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace he had built for her. Solomon said, My wife must not live in the palace of David, who was king of Israel. It's one of the places the ark of the Lord has entered. That makes it holy. Solomon had built the Lord's altar. It stood in front of the temple porch. On, the, on that altar, Solomon sacrificed their offering to the Lord. Each day he sacrificed what the Lord Moses required. He sacrificed the required offerings every Sabbath day. He also sacrificed them at each new moon feast and during the three yearly holy feasts. Those three were the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and the feast of booze. Solomon followed the orders his father David had given him. He appointed the groups of priests for their duties. He appointed the Levites to lead the people in praising the Lord. They also helped the priests do their required tasks each day. Solomon appointed the groups of men who guarded all the gates. That's what David, the man of God, had ordered. The king's commands were followed completely. They applied to the priests and Levites. They also applied to the temple treasure. All of Solomon's work was carried out. He started the day the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. It ended when the Lord's temple was finished. Solomon went to Ezi and Geba and Elath on the coast of Edom. Hiram sent him ships that were at his own officers commanded. There were sailors who knew the sea. Together with Solomon's men, they sailed to Ophir. They brought back 17 tons of gold. They gave it to King Solomon. The Queen of Sheba heard about how famous Solomon was. She, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. She arrived with a very large group of attendants. Her camels were carrying spices, huge amounts of gold, and valuable jewels. She came to Solomon and asked him about everything she wanted to know. He answered all her questions. There wasn't anything too hard for him to explain to her. So the Queen of Sheba saw how wise Solomon was. She saw the palace he had built. She saw the food on his table. She saw his official sitting there. She saw the robes of the servants who wait on everyone. She, she saw the robes the wine tasters were wearing. And she saw the burnt offering Solomon sacrificed at the Lord's temple. She could hardly believe everything she'd seen. She said to the king, Back in my own country, I heard a report about you. I heard about how much you had accomplished. I heard about, and I also heard about how wise you are. Everything I heard is true, but I didn't believe what people were saying, so I came to see for myself, and now I believe you. You are twice as wise as people say you are. The report I heard doesn't even begin to tell the whole story about you. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials must be. They always get to serve you and hear the wise things you say. May the Lord your God be praised. He takes great delight in you. He placed you on his throne as king. He put you there to rule over for him. Your God loves Israel very much. He longs to take good care of them forever. That's why he has made you king over them. He knows that you will do what is fair and right. So he gave the king four and a half tons of gold. He also gave him huge amounts of spices and valuable jewels. There had never been as many spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The servants of Hiram and the servants of Solomon brought gold from Ophir. They also brought album wood and valuable jewels. The king used the album wood to make to make steps for the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He also used it to make harps and lyres for those who played the music. No one had ever seen anything like those instruments in Judah before. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba everything she wanted and asked for. In fact, he gave her more than she had brought to him. Then she left. She returned to her own country with her attendants. Each year, Solomon received 25 tons of gold. That didn't include the money brought in by business and trade. All the kings of Arabia also brought gold and silver to Solomon. So did the governors of the territories. King Solomon made 200 large shields out of hammered gold. Each one weighed 15 pounds. He also made 300 small shields out of hammered gold. Each one weighed almost 8 pounds. The king put all the shields in the palace of the forest of the bat. Then he made a large throne. It was covered with ivory, and that was covered with pure gold. The throne had six steps. The gold stool for the king's feet were connected, was connected to it. The throne had armrests on both sides of the sea. A statue of a lion stood on each side of the throne. Twelve lions stood on the six steps. There was one at each end of each step. Nothing like that throne had ever been made for any other king. All of King Solomon's cups were made out of gold. All the things used in the palace of the forest of Laban were made out of pure gold. Nothing was made out of silver. <clears throat> when Solomon was king, silver wasn't considered to be worth very much. He had ships that carried goods to be traded. 
The crews of their ships were made out of were made up of hair and stones. Once every three years, the ships returned. They brought gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. King Solomon was richer than all the other kings on earth. He was also wiser than they were. All these kings wanted to meet Solomon in person. They wanted to see for themselves how wise God had made them. Year after year, everyone who came to him brought a gift. They brought gifts made out of silver and gold. They brought robes, weapons, and spices. They also brought horses and mules. Solomon had 4,000 spaces where he kept his horses and chariots. He had 12,000 horses. He kept some of his horses and chariots in this chariot city. He kept the others with them in Jerusalem. Solomon ruled over all the kings from the Euphrates, the to the land of the Philistines. He ruled over all the way to the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. He made cedar wood as common uh, as common. Then there are sea from the fig trees in the western hills. Solomon got horses from Egypt. He also got them from many other countries. The other events of Solomon's rule from beginning to end are written there. They are written in the records of Nathan the prophet. They are written in the prophets in the other Egypt. He was from Shem. <coughs> they are also written in the records of the visions of Edo, the prophet, about Jeroboam. Jeroboam was the son of Levi. Solomon ruled in Jerusalem over the whole nation of Israel for 40 years. Then he joined the members of his family who had already died. He was buried in the city of his father David. Solomon's son Rehoboam became the next, next king after him. Proverbs 4 My sons, get, listen to a father's teaching. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you good advice, so don't turn away from what I teach you. I too was once a young boy in my mother's house, and my, and my mother loved me deeply. Then my father taught me. He said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Heed my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom and get understanding. Never forget my words or turn away from them. Take close to wisdom, and she will keep you safe. Love her, and she will watch over you. To start being wise, you must first get wisdom. No matter what it costs, get understanding. Buy your wisdom highly, and she will lift you up. Hold her close, and she will honor you. She will set a beautiful crown on your head. She will give you a glorious crown. I said, Listen, I said what I said. Then you will live for many years. I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I lead you along straight paths. When you walk, nothing will slow you down. When you run, you won't trip and fall. Hold on to my teaching and don't let it go. Guard it well, because it is your life. Don't take the path of evil people. Don't live the way sinners do. Stay away from their path and don't travel on it. Turn away from it and go on your way. Sins can't rest until they do what is evil. They can't sleep until they make someone sick. They do evil just as easily as they eat food. They hurt others just as easily. They hurt others as easily as they drink wine. The path of those who do that is like the sun in the morning. It shines brighter and brighter until the full light of day. But the way of those who do what is wrong is like deep darkness. They don't know what makes them trip and fall. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my word. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them at, keep them in your heart. They are life to those who find them. They are held to a person's whole body. Above everything else, guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. Don't speak with crystal words. Keep evil talk away from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Keep looking right in front of you. Think carefully about the past that your feet walk on. Always choose the right way. Be intent to the right way. Keep your feet from the path of evil. Psalm 36. I have a message from God in my heart. It is about the evil ways of anyone who sins. They don't have any respect for God. They praise themselves so much they, that they can't see their sin or hate. They mouth speak words that are evil and false. They do not act wisely or do what is good. Even as they lie in bed, they make evil plans. They commit themselves to to a simple way of life. They never say no to what is wrong. Lord, your love is as high as the heavens. Your faithful love reaches to reaches up to the skies. Your holiness is as great as the height of the highest mountains. You are as honest as the oceans are deep. Lord, you keep people and animals safe. How precious to your faithful others. You will find safety in the shadow of your wings. They eat well because there is more than enough in your house. You will let them drink from your river that flows with good things. You have the fountain of life. We are filled with light because you give us light. Keep on loving those who know you. Keep on doing right to those who start to honor Don't let the feet of those who are proud serve you. Don't let the hands of those who are evil guide you. See how those who do you are from. They are thrown down and can't get up. Now that's done, I should now do the Lord's prayer. Please bear heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as you will serve in our debts. We are not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We will assist the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.